1.30 yet? Two minutes is fine. All right, we're going to start a little early. I apologize. Uh, my name is Dennis Gerhardstein. I'm the Public Information Officer for the Ramsey County Attorney's Office. Thank you for being here. Um, we're going to have two speakers today to cover our subject matter. The County Attorney, John Choi, will start, followed by Sam Clark, the St. Paul City Attorney. We will handle questions afterwards, and I'll simply remind you now and then that uh, when you do raise your hand, I'll call on you just to identify who you are, who you're with, and then if there's any specific person you'd like to address that question to, please indicate, otherwise we'll go from there. So let's have John come up. Good afternoon. Uh, thank you for joining us today as a part of our joint media briefing from the Ramsey County Attorney's Office and the St. Paul City uh, Attorney's Office to provide uh, the public an update on the investigation uh, of the incidents that occurred uh, during a March 4th uh, permanent rally at the Minnesota State Capitol. Uh, today, uh, to my left, I'm joined by St. Paul City Attorney Sam Clark, who will have some remarks uh, after me. Um, before I get into the things that I want to say, I want to also make sure that everybody fully understands that this is still an ongoing investigation and uh, there are pending cases now and therefore we are very limited in what we can say. Um, and I also want to thank the public for their patience uh, as the investigation uh, has uh, progressed uh, since uh, March 4th. As all of you know, there was approximately about 400 people that attended a rally uh, in support of President Donald J. Trump on March 4th at the Minnesota State Capitol. Um, there were also a group of people, protesters, who wanted to protest um, that rally in support of Donald Trump who were also there, many of whom uh, were there peacefully um, and they arrived as the rally was underway. Unfortunately, some of the protesters arrived uh, prepared to cause problems, and they were equipped uh, with face and head coverings and goggles. Uh, this uh, unlawful group attempted to enter the rally from the second floor staircase by pushing, shoving, and eventually employing smoke bombs, mace, fireworks, thereby creating a dangerous situation and a very chaotic environment for all of those who were present at the rally. Minnesota State Troopers and St. Paul Police and Capitol uh, Security were able to apprehend multiple suspects during this incident. Uh, and as you can imagine, I think some of you have seen some of the video um, this was a very chaotic situation. There were multiple people who witnessed uh, what happened. Uh, many of the perpetrators uh, concealed their identities and um, uh, there was just a lot of chaos involved with all of this. Uh, the police uh, at that moment did the best that they could uh, to document uh, everything that happened during that time period. Uh, that event, as you know, March 4th was on a Saturday. Uh, that case uh, was presented to us um, in the county attorney's office on Monday morning. And as you can imagine, uh, what was presented uh, was just a lot of information, but it was very difficult to um, get to the, to the point where we were able to um, charge anybody with felony crimes. So our office at that time declined to prosecute, but asked the investigators uh, to both submit uh, their files to the St. Paul City Attorney's Office for charging consideration and to continue and supplement uh, their investigation. Uh, the City Attorney's Office also concluded that more investigation was necessary to bring any criminal charges and requested further investigation from the State Patrol. So with the assistance of the St. Paul Police Department, uh, the Minnesota State Patrol continued their investigation to unravel and clarify the events of March 4th using additional eyewitness interviews, people who came forward, social media postings, cell phone recordings. Investigators 
we're, more, we're able to more specifically identify a number of individual suspects and connect their actions to criminal conduct. I want to thank uh, all of the witnesses who did come forward uh, in those subsequent weeks who provided eyewitness statements and cell phone recordings. I also want to thank the State Patrol and Colonel Matt Langer uh, for their hard work um, and all of the prosecutors that were involved uh, in the investigation of this matter in the St. Paul City Attorney's Office and of course in the Ramsey County Attorney's Office as well. Both the Ramsey County Attorney's Office and the St. Paul City Attorney's Office received uh, the case again for recharging consideration from the Minnesota State Patrol on April 28th. Uh, and today, I am pleased to announce felony charges against the following individuals. First, Anton William uh, Buchert is charged with two felony counts, one of obstructing legal process at the felony level and prohibited use of tear gas and tear gas compounds and one gross misdemeanor count of third degree riot. A warrant has been issued for his arrest and police are actively looking for him. Secondly, uh, we have charged Francis Thomas Sagermerick. Uh, he is charged with one felony count of prohibited use of tear gas and tear gas compounds and one gross misdemeanor count of third degree riot. Defender, defendant Sager Merrick is in custody and is awaiting his first appearance at the Ramsey County Law Enforcement Center, uh, which will take place this afternoon. Uh, when people seek to prevent others who are peacefully assembled uh, from making their voices heard, it threatens the very foundation of our democracy. And I am very pleased that we have gathered sufficient evidence to charge these individuals who we allege unlawfully took their counter protest activities too far. In addition to these felony charges, the St. Paul City Attorney's Office is also prepared to announce misdemeanor and gross misdemeanor level charges against six individuals. And at this time, I'm gonna turn it over to uh, St. Paul City Attorney Sam Clark. <clears throat> Thank you, John, and thank you to the state troopers, the St. Paul police officers, and prosecutors who have worked so hard on these cases. I also want to thank the victims and the witnesses who came forward and <clears throat> participated in the investigation. And before I get to the list of our charges that we filed today, I'd like to make a few quick points. First, I want to highlight something that John touched on in his remarks because there seems to be some confusion out there about what my office did on March 6th and what we've been doing since then. To set the record straight, on the mo morning of Monday, March 6th, we received the initial police reports from the state troopers. That same morning, we started getting multiple phone calls from witnesses who were at the Capitol on Saturday, March 4th, and who claimed to have evidence or wanted to give a statement. It became clear to us that we needed to send the original cases back to the troopers for further investigation. And so that's what we did. Uh, the point of the further investigation as I saw it was to make sure that the troopers gathered all of the available evidence and to determine if they could identify any individuals who committed crimes inside the Capitol. The troopers conducted a thorough investigation that resulted in numerous additional supplemental reports, witness statements, videos, and photos. And they completed that investigation and presented their evidence to, uh, to my office on April 28th. Second, I think it's really important for us to acknowledge that the people who showed up at the Capitol intending to express themselves peacefully which was a vast majority of the people who were there, as far as I can tell, did everything right that day. From the beginning, this has never been about what anybody had to say at the Capitol on March 4th. It's also never been about who the police arrested. In my mind, this has always been about 
making sure that people who seek to express themselves peacefully can do so without fear, or do so free from fear of violence. That should be a bright line for everyone. And then finally, on a personal note, I just want to take the opportunity while I'm standing in front of a microphone to say that the St. Paul City Attorney's Office is full of dedicated professionals, and I'm honored to lead them. A prosecutor's duty is to act in the interest of justice, and I believe that's what we're doing today. We are charging six individuals with crimes arising from their conduct at the March 4th rally at the Capitol. Our basis for charging each of these individuals is laid out in detail in the complaints. We believe the evidence is clear and that we can prove each of these charges beyond a reasonable doubt. For his actions inside of the Capitol, we are charging Austin Marcus Jackson with use of an electronic incapacitation device or a stun gun and third degree riot. We are charging five individuals with fleeing on foot and concealing identity in a public place. Those five are Jonathan Mark Adams, Linwood Michael Kane, Glenn Frederick Kimball, Isabel Kimball, and Haley Marina Ryan. In addition to the charges of fleeing on foot and concealing identity, we have charged Isabel Kimball with possession of fireworks and Linwood Michael Kane with obstructing legal process with force. And with that, uh, John and I are happy to take any questions you have. So I'll just give a quick reminder, you know, with the question of obstructed human beings, so okay. the, uh, the uh, charges today also for the six? Yes, we've filed our charges, they've been signed. Today? Yes. They are not. Are they ticketed or is the process different? The process is different than a felony. Char the process is working. They're charged by summons and complaint, so they will receive the court summons with the date that they need to show up to court. And the individual who is in custody now, when was that person arrested? I believe that the individual, uh, the defendant was uh, Sager Merrick. He was arrested uh, last night. And again, uh, he is in custody now, but he is awaiting uh, his uh, first appearance, which is, could be happening right now. Paul. Uh, John Paul Bloom, uh, Fox 9. One, the address on, on, on your second, the one who's been charged by summons, uh, your warrant that you're looking for, is that a Canadian address? That Correct. Uh, not, we worried about trying to find him? Well, we're hoping to, um, but, uh, and, but the police are actively looking for him. We believe that he's here in this area. And then my just question would either between both of you or not, uh, one or the other. Like, with, with these lines of felony, gross misdemeanor, misdemeanor, how difficult, I mean, would your offices work and consult with one another? Or could you kind of talk about the, the thought processes on why one rose to the level of felony and one, you know, others remained, you know, at that gross misdemeanor line? Where was this cold line? Well, you just follow the law, and so it, it, you know, the, the words of the statute are going to be different. So just as an example, uh, with respect to the stun gun, right, um, there isn't necessarily a felony charge that's applicable. It's kind of ironic, maybe something that the legislature uh, should look into, um, but if there isn't an available felony charge, um, then you can't charge somebody with the felony if there aren't sufficient facts. So. Um, again, everything that we do is focused on what the facts are, what the law allows, and uh, we proceed accordingly. The prosecutors, both in the St. Paul City Attorney's Office and the County Attorney's Office, have been in communication and talking about the various issues. Uh, but again, it's just all dependent on what the law is and what the facts um, uh, permit. Chair Levin. Well, I think when you have a, a situation that's chaotic um, and one of the things that you want to do is you want to make sure that you have the right person that you are charging with a particular crime. And so you, know, you can imagine, first of all, the witnesses, the victims that were there present, um, they didn't necessarily just stick around and, and, and just stay at the Capitol after all of this is happening. They went home. 
And so in order to track down additional people who may have witnessed certain things or have t taken video evidence, um, that, that information was not necessarily available right away. In addition to that, looking at all of the various pieces of evidence like video photographs um, and to make sure that we're properly identifying uh, the right people, because you can imagine um, there's just, when you have a mass group of people, there are people that probably kind of look like each other. Um, when the, the quality of the photograph or the video might be from afar. And so there's just all of those issues. And so uh, we, whenever we charge somebody with a crime, especially in this type of context, uh, we want to be certain uh, that we have the right defendants, that we have the appropriate charges. Well, um, I felt that there were some unfair things uh, that were said by certain individuals uh, um, who wanted to make this into some form of a partisan issue. Um, but, you know, from my perspective, I've done this for, you know, over a decade now, and I have to ignore that and just focus on creating the space and protecting the investigators and the staff in the county attorney's office so that they can do their work and whatever they're saying about me um, or whatever it might be, uh, I just have to kind of take that and uh, recognize that um, the process is more important. And so you never really heard me um, speaking out, uh, offering any type of alternative um, uh, factual uh, understanding of maybe what was happening because, again, when an investigation is happening, um, you want that to happen uh, without the the pressure of what the public wants. I mean, we don't prosecute people just because certain people in our community think they should be. It has to be consistent with the law and the facts. Well, what are they saying about this? Well, I think they were suggesting that somehow that this is all some form of a partisan uh, uh, lens that was being put into it and that uh, we weren't prosecuting um, these individuals because they were protesting uh, President Trump. But that those types of issues as prosecutors were, again, as Sammy said, we're ministers of justice, and we don't take those things into, regard, in, into uh, consideration. It's not about who you are. Uh, it's about what you've done and what the law says. Last question in the back. No, never have it. Never met the man. And I'm sorry, Nina, let's get <laughs> I mean, I can, I'd jump in. Absolutely not. Okay. Nina, let's give you the last question. Okay. Uh, Nina with WTCO. Can you say how many more people um, are in the open investigation or how many more people might be charged? Um, no, I'm not going to speculate on that. Just to say that I think that the State Patrol has done a free throw uh, investigation um, and we're proceeding with what they've presented. I don't know what the name of their group would be, and it wouldn't matter. Uh, and, and the second thing is the, uh, the charges against <coughs> several of the people on the misdemeanor. Uh, I have two questions. Basically. One is the charges on several of these misdemeanors where they're running away and haven't identified themselves. That sounds kind of weak and the kind of thing that might not stand up in court. I mean, you're not charging them with do, having being involved in any violence or anything. You're just saying they ran away and their faces were concealed. That sounds sort of thin, doesn't it? I'm not really sure how to start to answer that question other than to stand by what I said, is I believe we can prove everything we've alleged beyond a reasonable doubt. Um, you know, the, the nature of the charges is... Uh, sort of not up to us. We don't make up the laws. So uh, not, maybe I'm not following your question. Well, you just say running away and they were concealing themselves. It's not like three or four of those people are. 
All five people have been charged with fleeing on foot and concealing identity in a public place. Uh, the nature of the evidence is laid out in thorough detail in the complaints. So I'd invite you to read the complaints. Are you if going to give us copies? Is that yes. available? And uh, that's probably a good place to transition because I will be sending a note to all of you with all eight complaints with every detail that uh, will, I think, fill in some of those gaps. Uh, I'll send that out in about five minutes. And if you fail for some reason, you're not on my list, please see me. But I want to thank our two guests. And uh, uh, thank you all for coming. And I'll be around to answer additional questions if you need them. Can you give us the, 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 the,